Evgeny Prigozhin, uh, former head of Wagner Group uh, and would-be putschist against Vladimir Putin's Kremlin and Russia, uh, is no more. Uh, it, it was an unprecedented uh, story, that coup attempt against Putin's regime. Uh, this was the man who, of course, had been built up and so loyal uh, to Vladimir Putin with the most powerful paramilitary organization in the world, um, fighting uh, a battle on the ground in Ukraine and fighting against uh, the Minister of Defense and others, uh, losing that battle and deciding to turn his forces uh, against the Russian regime. Uh, first in Rostov uh, and the uh, capturing the seat of the Southern Command uh, and then marching uh, improbably uh, on to Moscow, where at the final moment uh, he backs down and uh, agrees to a quote unquote deal uh, with Putin. Putin, who went uh, on national media and referred to Prigozhin as a traitor. Uh, let's be clear. The important information from all of this was not uh, that there was a deal that was cut. The important information that NATO uh, is paying very close attention to is that Putin didn't take Prigozhin out immediately. Uh, he contained the threat. He took his time and acted in a much more calculated way for Putin's own survival. And, you know, given that we've never seen Putin tested like this, and given that for a dictator, it's important to have uh, some air of unpredictability uh, that you might just launch uh, those weapons, you might have your finger on the button, and that creates some deterrence. The fact is that when Putin was faced uh, with a truly uh, regime-ending threat, uh, that uh, what he did was very careful, uh, very calculated, um, and, and ensured the best possible ability uh, for Putin uh, to keep on keeping on. And now, as I said back in June, Prigozhin was a dead man walking. Uh, Putin had good reason not to want to take him out at the point of his maximum leverage not least because it would be very ugly in and around Moscow. Uh, it would lead to a lot of people getting killed that you wouldn't be able to contain or not show the Russian public. It quite probably would have showed that Putin himself had fled to St. Petersburg from Moscow, a message that certainly he didn't want to see go out. And of course, Russia was also fighting what was at that point expected to be a very difficult and dangerous Ukrainian counteroffensive and opening up a fight on two fronts and taking troops away from Ukraine uh, also would have made that much harder for him. Uh, so now um, Wagner has been contained. Their media company has been shut. Many of their bank accounts were frozen. Their contracts are being transferred. Um, and the Ukrainian counteroffensive um, has mostly been shut down uh, by the Russians. Uh, and that, of course, makes it far, far safer and easier for Putin to go after uh, the former Wagner chief. And so now Evgeny Prigozhin and the military command structure of Wagner, uh, that leadership dead uh, in a plane crash. Uh, I'm fairly comfortable, uh, even though there is no direct evidence at this point, we probably will never have any, uh, saying that Putin gave that order personally. And hey, uh, he actually had some time on his hands since he can't exactly travel to the BRICS summit in South Africa. Um, and I'm also comfortable saying that there's no strong near-term threat to Putin. Let's remember that even when the Wagner forces were on their way to Moscow, that there were no defections from Russia's official military structure, no defections from oligarchs. And of course, there was not major instability among the Russian people on the streets. Um, yes, of course, the Russian economy is doing um, a lot worse now than it was uh, six months ago, a year ago. But Putin still runs that place. And as everyone in Russia can now clearly see, there remain very serious consequences for taking him on. That's it for me. I'll talk to you all real soon.